What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out Ronda Rousey exposed a secret WWE draft. WWE stars leaving, and Undertaker spits some truths and other wrestling related news. This should be a very interesting one. I have been seeing uh some of the stuff that's been involved in Ronda Rousey. I believe uh someone uh had uh recently, I want to say maybe today or yesterday, had said something about the truth about ronda rousey and why people um back like backstage didn't really too much like her for how they how she would treat them like I, i've been seeing that on social media so uh definitely want to uh, get a better understanding of what's going on with that and also the secret wwe draft like people have been getting drafted to different brands but it wasn't you know like we didn't it wasn't put out there like it would it didn't happen on television it's, it's happening off television type stuff so we're gonna check this out should be very interesting appreciate all love support let's get right into this one man what is going on guys it is wrestlemania here back with some more news join us now as we look at the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know including uh, everybody hated ronda rousey is go. camille headed to aew rumored heat between the undertaker and cm punk what WWE actually thought of the draft and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification Very bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. And now let's see the intro and get straight into our first story. Our first story looks at everybody hated Ronda Rousey. At top of today's news are comments from former WWE announcer Jimmy Smith concerning what he claims was a general hatred for Ronda Rousey in both WWE and the UFC. I've never been a religious person. One of the things I've always said about God, he gets all the credit, none of the blame. That's what Ronda Rousey wants. All the credit, none of the blame. I want credit for all my wins, my losses. I had CTE and all this and all that. I'm the greatest to ever do it. But when it didn't work, it was so and so and so and so and never me. She never gives credit to the people who actually beat her. The idea that I left MMA and went to WWE because I had a concussion problem makes no sense. But Ringside News also mm. summarized some of Smith's other comments made on Sirius XM's Behind the Cage. Smith claimed that many backstage personnel in WWE and UFC had a negative view of Rousey. He revealed that these individuals took pleasure in her consecutive losses to Holly Holm and Amanda Nunes, Damn. suggesting that they were rooting against her due to her attitude and behavior. Smith, a former MMA fighter turned broadcaster, added that he normally doesn't discuss backstage matters. However, it appears he felt Rousey's comments needed to be addressed, and according to Smith via Ringside News, Rousey had a tendency to push around or talk down to those staff members, creating an environment of distaste among those who worked with her. What do you guys think of everybody hating Ronda Rousey? Let us know in the comments. It doesn't seem far-fetched. I'm gonna be honest with you. It don't. It doesn't. Like, you can... You can just see how she would say about like, the things she was saying on Twitter. That's how she felt. That's how she felt about the fans. Some of that was justifiable. Some of it, it, I can understand why she would feel that way. But a lot of it was just like, you're shitting on the business that you wanted to be a part of. Like, of course, WWE wasn't going to pass up on the opportunity to have you in their division. But she would shit on the industry as as a whole and she has been doing it now the comments she made about vince and management obviously people are going to look at that and be like okay you know what i'm saying that that's that's a fair assessment to make but some of the stuff she said about the the business itself you're like then why why be a part of it what what, what was the point you know what i'm saying you could have just rolled off into the sunset with your mma career so i I could see that. Not saying that it's true or not, but I could see that she would definitely push her weight around because she's Ronda fucking Rousey, and you gotta kind of do what she says and and how she wants it to be done because she's Ronda Rousey. I could see that. Could be wrong. That may not be the case, but just off the things she said on Twitter, it doesn't seem that far fetched. What y'all think? It's down below. Next up is Camille headed to AEW. There's been plenty of free agent signings in 2024, and now it appears former NWA Women's Champion Camille is headed to AEW. A Fightful Select has reported that Camille has signed with AEW and has been under contract since February. 
The oh. former NWA Women's Champion, who held the title for over 800 days, had Jeez. spoken with the WWE about coming to work for the company. There was speculation about whether the 31-year-old grappler would have to begin on NXT if she signed with WWE. That's apparently a moot point. Khan recently appeared on Z100 with Josh Martinez and had this to say about Camille. I think Camille is a great wrestler. We followed her very closely. She's worked with a lot of top AEW talent. As for her status, I can't comment to that, but I think she's a tremendous talent and would be an asset to any wrestling company for sure, including AEW. Tony likely wants to keep Camille signing a big surprise, especially if he's working to make sure that she has a strong debut and equally strong program. AEW has expanded its women's roster with recent signings such as Mercedes Monet and mm -hmm. Diana Perrazzo, and Camille should be another fantastic acquisition. AEW seems to be working hard to improve its women's division, and this steady influx of talent could help it become a respectable part of the promotion, as fans look forward to women's matches, much like many fans in the WWE do with its female talent. Which is good. Next up, The Undertaker talks rumored heat with CM Punk. Now, this the is CM interesting. Punk can be a polarizing figure at times, so what happened when The Undertaker had to discuss wrestling protocol with a straighted superstar, and did this lead to some heat between the two? During a Q&A session, The Undertaker recently discussed the rumored heat he had with Punk, explaining there was only an instance he could recall where things might have been tense. The Phenom noted how interactions are often blown out of proportion before mm -hmm. he detailed what happened. So we had an initiative at one point where they wanted us, the wrestlers went traveling to dress a little bit nicer. They wanted us in business casual with a really relaxed viewpoint on the casual. I think we might have been in Europe. I'm not sure where we were at. I wanted to say we were somewhere in Europe and I was getting off the bus and getting ready to go to the arena. And I just stopped him because he, he was, you know, he was dressing like Punk did back in the day, whatever it was. <laughs> you may recall the WWE's dress policy from several years back and as taken notes, I was like, hey man, none of us like having to dress like this, but I think you're getting a little bit of heat with the boys. Mm. You just might want to think about dressing a little better. If I recall correctly, he says, well, what about Cena? I may have replied, you're not Cena. There's nothing wrong with that. Taker and Punk mm. had a big match at WrestleMania 29, but apparently Punk was expecting more, at least according to Taker. I guess, you know, he thought he should have been the main event when we worked at WrestleMania against somebody else, not against me. And when he works with me, I'm not sure if he thought that he should have went over, but I mean, he's got confidence in himself. So why don't, working wise, I mean, perfect. And that's all I care about. At the end of the day, you don't have to like me. You don't have to be best friends. Mm -hmm. But somehow or another, it got all blown out of proportion that, like, Undertaker hates CM Punk. No, I don't. I try not to give people the power of hate. Taker Damn. is a highly respected figure in the wrestling world for years. He also informally dealt with problems between wrestlers. Yes, What do you yes. guys think of how Taker handled things with Punk? Do you think there was any heat between either Superstar? Or was this a case of a mountain out of a molehill? Next up. That's very interesting how they handled that. And you can tell CM Punk had, it, it, CM Punk definitely had a chip on him sh on his shoulder. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's one of those type of things where you know he he definitely probably was very difficult to work with, but the people knew that he was talented. Some people probably felt like he was overrated, but people knew, the right people knew, even Undertaker, I'm sure, knew that he was talented. And he had some worth in the business and I'm, I'm i doubt he's like that now it seems like he's much more chill now and sometimes that's really what it is sometimes when you're young and you have this this sense of self-worth which there's nothing wrong with that but sometimes it can be to the point of you feel like you're better than everybody else in a sense and that may not be the case at that particular moment or it may be the case and you kind of just run rampant you feel like no one can tell you anything and his story definitely reminds me of hbk's story back in the day in like the 80s early 90s i want to say like early 90s that era when he was an asshole legitimately they they remind me so much of a like like character wise not because of what they were doing off camera but how they were perceived by other people and honestly Time heals all and changes people. And I, I don't think, you know what I'm saying, CM Punk is on that type of timing now. I think he's more for, you know, the locker room and, and making sure things go smoothly. But I don't think it was that big of a deal, to be honest with you. I mean, Undertaker, he, he handled that pretty smoothly, as best as you possibly could. So Did the WWE draft disappoint The Undertaker? The 2024 WWE Draft turned out to be a mixed bag for fans as a consensus seems to be that Night 1 was a complete dud while Night 2 was somewhat of an improvement. 
The biggest complaint is that there were no major moves between any of the brands and the draft mm -hmm. seemed to be more about keeping stars than drafting top stars. Now Taker is sharing his thoughts on this year's draft saying, you know what it missed for me? I wanted to see some deals made right. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of teams, they want a quarterback, they trade up or they trade uh -huh. down. The WWE limited some major moves by restricting champions from being drafted. Yeah. The surprise announcement that Roman Reigns had withdrawn from the draft was puzzling as there was no significant explanation made about how he could do this or what it meant. Yeah. There was also the puzzling situation where the women's tag team champions were drafted despite the men's tag team champions being exempt. Calling the draft a muddled mess might be an understatement for fans. But Taker continued on saying, you know, that would to be me more compelling to watch. You're expecting your fan base to watch two nights of TV content. And I mean, to be completely honest, there wasn't a whole lot of change really. It wasn't. Sometimes long running episodic shows focus more on the illusion of change, but the WWE draft failed to pull that off too. What do you think about the draft and is there a way to actually improve it? Yeah, that's and that's the thing. I, I like his take on it. Um, Because you really limit... I mean, it makes sense to lock the championships in their respective brands so you don't have situations where people are swapping championships. It's kind of stupid. So I do like that. Um, but at the same time, those are like the top stars. So the top stars are already locked in to wherever. That's it. You know, and that kind of brings in a lot of excitement as well. But I do like the idea, and maybe they do implement that in the future, of having these guys, like these brands, really make it feel like even a, a, a bigger draft a real draft for sure then with the ad addition of i'm going to smackdown decided to trade these picks so they can have this pick in this round or something like that that would be cool that would be you know you you know obviously you would have to limit it because it's only two brands well it's three brands but i think that would be a, a pretty interesting way just to add a little bit of spice and flavor but ultimately much didn't change other than factions going to other rosters couple cool nxt call-ups much really did not change so we'll see how things play out going uh forward next up is there hope for the draft while there was a disappointment with the draft, there may be hope according to WrestleVotes. As he tweeted, Sources indicate that WWE is generally pleased with the draft results and how everything played out on TV. I've been told that they don't want to do too much high-level shuffling as it was satisfied with the pre-draft breakdowns at the top of the card. It's worth mentioning that a trade or two is expected before Monday's roster locking deadline. Now, oh, does it make okay. sense for the WWE to carry out a trade off camera when the purpose of the draft was yeah. to mark it as an important event? Is the WWE doing damage control with the rumored move? Next up, a new championship mm -hmm. coming to NXT. And there's a new title coming to NXT, and with that also comes a question of whether Raw or SmackDown will follow the black and gold brand's lead. NXT General Manager Ava announced on the 30th April NXT that there will be a 12-woman tournament to crown the inaugural NXT North American Women's Championship. Oh, championship. WrestleTalk awesome. reported the 12 stars that impress the most will advance to six qualifying matches to determine who will ultimately face off in a ladder match at NXT Battleground to determine the first women's North American champion. Okay. This new title reopens the discussion about whether the main roster needs a secondary title for the women's division. There have been repeated calls for the Women's Intercontinental and United States Championship to give the women's undercard another belt to contend for. This makes sense as the WWE has a solid lineup of main event women, but its women's undercard is often underutilized except in minor feuds. Yeah. A secondary title could help the female superstars develop their skills and get over with the fans, with the ultimate goal of elevating some to the main event. Such a title could help the WWE test its female superstars to see who is ready for further push without throwing them into the there main event when go. they aren't ready. Do you think WWE should add a secondary women's championship on Raw and SmackDown? Let us know in the comments down below. I'm down for it. I'm down for it. I honestly... I would do it. Because at first I was like, maybe you should get rid of the tag team championships. But no, because you can still have some people... It, you know, you can still have some people fight for that, um, even though they don't really uh, put too much effort into, like, the tag team division for women um, as much. Hopefully that changes because we do see um, Bianca and um, Jade going after the Kabuki, Kabuki Warriors for the tag team title. So it could be very interesting to see what they do with that. But a mid-card championship, yes. But it only needs to be one. I don't think you need a Intercontinental and a United States 
I don't think the rosters is that deep enough for that to work. Um, not on both brands. So I do think there should be at least one uh, uh, mid-card championship for now to float between both brands. I know that would kind of defeat the purpose of the draft, but for now, because I don't think both brands have enough women for just a one mid-card championship on top of, you know, because I think they do that with the tag team, uh, the women's tag team championships. They can float be between both brands. So I think the a mid-card championship for the women should be able to float between both brands until they get more women on both respective rosters. And then you can have maybe a non United States on Raw and a inter uh, Intercontinental Championship for the women on SmackDown if you wanted to do something like that. But I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Women's wrestling is it's been presented for the most part as something to be taken seriously and uh, i'm down for it so if they do it sign me up. finally an nxt superstar set to leave in june and last but not least it appears nxt superstar scripts is leaving the wwe in june at least according to a report from fightful Look select sean ross sam fightful select has learned that scripts formerly known as reggie contract is set to expire at the start of june he's been informed that the deal will be expiring and he'll be a free agent Fightful Sean Ross Sapp has learned that Scripps, who will likely go by Sydney Akeem, plans to continue wrestling and okay. expected his deal to not be renewed. As Scripps is a talented and charismatic worker who caught many fans by surprise when he went from playing a background role as Carmela Samelia, mm -hmm. Reggie into an in-ring performer capable of some incredible acrobatic moves, and then he took on the Scripps character when he went to NXT, but despite an initial push, he never seemed to get any direction. But there you have it, folks. Bro, the wildest news story. That shit looks awful. I'm sorry. I can't. It's hard to get behind somebody and their fucking outfit looks like that. No, no matter how good they are at wrestling, that just, it just takes you. When you see this person for the first time, you hear their name, Scripps. It already sounds kind of outlandish. And then you see the fit. You just, you all, you check out. You check out because you're just like, what is this? I, I wish they could have gave him something better because that shit looks cringe. So hopefully he's able to do something better for himself in the independent scene, wherever he ends up going, and really build up his stock in his roster because that, for me, it, it, it ain't it. But comment down below. Let me know, man. Do you guys agree with uh, the opinion that a lot of people didn't like ronda rousey you know do you guys feel that there's some truth to that that ronda was mean uh to the the people that was working behind the scenes or do you feel like that's just some type of rumor to slander ronda after the stuff she didn't said about wwe recently y'all let me know down below but i appreciate all love and support road to 150k and i'm still gonna be the youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace